do a lot of shows for the library. We're down here today at the uh, Smithtown Library, and we're doing a show, and the show consists of about 100 newspapers. Our shows range anywhere from about 350 down to 100. We don't like going over the 350 mark because they can't absorb anymore. It's like a computer hitting overload. Uh, I hope you enjoy seeing the front covers. It was very interesting, fascinating. I've walked around a couple of times and each time I see something that I missed before. And um, it's just amazing how he collected so many wonderful papers that bring back so many memories. It's been quite a collection that I've seen here, uh, far beyond what I would have expected, uh, going back 50 to 100 years, uh, both positive and negative, but that's what history is all about. The newspaper museum came about when a friend of mine asked, he says, let's go into business and says, what can we do that, you know, wouldn't cost too much money? Now, my friend's name was Johnny Greco, good, good guy, really nice man. Johnny and I decided we were going to open up a newspaper museum for the simple fact that it wouldn't cost us anything for stock. All we had to worry about was the rent. And we found this little building in Riverhead, about two stores away from the aquarium. We set the museum up, put over 400 newspapers into it, opened it up to the general public for free, just to come in. In the beginning, I couldn't even get them to come in for free because they had no idea what they were walking into. But when they did come in, they were astounded and amazed. The newspaper museum, as of now, is a mobile operation. We got tired of waiting for the customers to come to us, and now we come to you. What got me started with the newspapers was my mother. She collected the Kennedy assassination papers. She also collected the 1969 first moon landing papers, and she did a wonderful job. She has the papers from the day before they took off to go to the moon, the entire journey to the moon, the landing on the moon, the return voyage, and also three days of the quarantine. So I thought that was a pretty good job of collecting. Now, my first newspaper was the Kent State Massacre. And that's what got me into the true collecting. Uh, about two months later after the event, I was moving, and I was moving the sweaters in the drawer that I had put the newspapers in. And when I moved the sweaters, and I saw the newspaper, and the girl over the body like this, it just put chills down my spine. And I said, if it affected me like this, how is it gonna affect the general public? So I started to collect them. I didn't collect with any goal in mind other than just to satisfy myself and the amusement of collecting them. Years go by, and as the years went by, I became a little more um, aware of what I was collecting. And I started to uh, keep records on events that would happen, particular people being caught doing things, them going to trial, going through the trial, being incarcerated, coming out of incarceration many years later, and then coming out into the general public. Uh, it's, it's, it's a strange hobby to get into because they're very, very difficult to locate old newspapers. Now, I have one here from, uh, I think it was 56. It has to do with the UN vote to, uh, well, allows, they changed the ruling around a little bit. It actually, the vetoes caused the uh, Six Day War. Now, this happened on October 31st, 1956. And then right here on October 30th, we have the Jewish nation just about ready to seize the Suez Canal in the Six Day War. Now these wars have been going on since the day Israel came into existence, which we cover. We have all of the newspapers on Israel coming into existence. We cover a lot of their uh, 
wars and problems they had with the Middle East, uh, Syria, Egypt, and so on. And then back during the Carter uh, administration, they were able to sign a peace treaty between Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat. And the peace treaty still holds to this day, but within two weeks of the signing of that treaty, uh, Anwar Sadat was assassinated. We have the assassination papers on that also. So many of our leaders have been assassinated. So much goes on in the world. You see the newspaper, you see the event, and then you forget it. It's fantastic, especially when you have newspapers like this, that I can tell you exactly where I was on the day that this happened, on the Kennedy assassination. I was in my last year in Delaware, in my apartment cleaning it when the announcement came over to the TV that Kennedy was assassinated. And it's just unbelievable all this stuff that you see here. Well, I'm here to help you remember all of the history. We have over 5,000 newspapers ready to be put online uh, that consists of the newspapers from larger cities. Uh, we have an unbroken line from 1928 with the election of Roosevelt as governor of, the, of New York State. We also have Roosevelt's first election in 32 in our World War II segment. We have his second, his third, and his fourth election. So we cover Roosevelt pretty well. We have a, right now about 240 six newspapers on World War II, starting from 1936, with Hitler moving into the Sudeten, Austria, Czechoslovakia, during the years 36 to 39. In 39, September 1st, he attacked Poland as Russia moved in from its side. Germany moved in from theirs and literally crushed Poland in 28 days. We have another newspaper, Admiral Byrd. Uh, let's see, this one here is 1927. Admiral Byrd flying to Hawaii, okay? And I believe it's 24 hours, first nonstop. And Admiral Byrd seemed to get around quite a bit. He flew over the North Pole, the South Pole, and uh, so on. Now this is the Springfield, uh, the soldier's friend. This was printed in April of 23, 1870. And this is the forerunner of Stars and Stripes, the magazine that the newspaper, uh, that the military hands out to the, all of its uh, people. <laughs> the Evening Telegraph, again, we're dealing in uh, 1864, which was still during the time of the Civil War. We're just now beginning our Civil War collection. We're covering right now the first two years, and we're hoping to come up with uh, more, you know, more papers and make it a little more compact. The World War II we cover very extensively because, well, that's only 75 years old. <laughs> One of our topics that we have that most people seem to like, believe it or not, are the obituaries. They love to see who they've outlived. I have done a lot of shows, probably somewhere between 80 or 90, and a good many of them have been in adult homes. And you would think that that would be a newspaper that you would hide. They love it. They're the first ones they go to. And uh, some of the people, like we have the Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr., we have Dean Martin, S Frank Sinatra, we have uh, Jerry Lewis, if you want to kind of slide him in there with Dean Martin, uh, we have the Beatles, John Lennon, uh, George Harrison, uh, oh gosh, uh, all premieres from Russia, all of the presidents, movie stars. We have, starting with Roosevelt, uh, we have, uh, about everybody that's died since Roosevelt, actually. We have the Kennedy assassination. You have Johnson, who died at 64. And then, uh, let's see, we still have our buddy um, Carter. He's still alive. And Nixon is passed. 
Uh, let's see here, anybody else? Movie stars, Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy, Marlena Dietrich. Now these are the oldest stars, but we also have, you know, uh, other stars that have a little bit, you know, later time period. Earthquakes. We have uh, many newspapers on disasters. We have earthquakes coming in from California. We have several from California, so they all look the same after a while when you start looking at the papers, because they basically have it in the same place. Uh, we have volcanoes erupting on the islands. We have the Oklahoma uh, bombing by McVeigh, which was in retaliation for Waco, which we cover. We have one newspaper where the, where the King of England abdicates the throne to marry an American divorcee. It was a huge scandal. And during one of our shows, we had a, a person from England there, and when they saw the newspaper, they couldn't believe I had it. Perhaps in the future, if you should ever want to have a show from me, I just contact me at 631-512-1518, and we can arrange to have a show done for you. And we can even pick topics if you'd like.